In this project we'll show you how to build an asynchronous web server that displays temperature and humidity using a DHT sensor. The web server will build updates the readings automatically without the need to refresh the web page. To build a web server we'll be using the ESP Async Web Server Library that provides an easy way to build an asynchronous web server. Building an asynchronous web server has several advantages, such as Handle more than one connection at the same time When you send a response, you are immediately ready to handle other connections while the server is taking care of sending the response in the background Simple template processing engine to handle templates And much more I recommend taking a quick look at the library documentation on its GitHub page before proceeding to the web server, you need to wire the DHT11 or DHT22 sensor to the ESP32 as shown in this schematic diagram. In this case, we're connecting the data pin to GPIO27, but you can connect it to any other digital pin. You also need to install a couple of libraries for this project. The DHT and the other fruit unified sensor driver library to read from the DHT sensor and the ESP Async Web Server and Async TCP libraries to build the asynchronous web server. Go to the project page for the links and instructions to install these libraries. Having the ESP32 board add-on installed in the Arduino IDE, you have everything ready to start writing the code to build the web server. Open your Arduino IDE and copy the code provided in the project page. Let's see how the code works. First, Import the required libraries. Insert your network credentials in these variables so that the ESP32 can connect to your local network. Here, define the GPIO that the DHT data pin is connected to. In this case, it's connected to GPIO27. Then, select the DHT sensor type you're using. In our example, we're using the DHT22. If you're using another type, you just need to uncomment your sensor and comment all the others. Here, create a DHT object with a type and pin we've defined earlier. Create an async web server object on part 80. We've created two functions, one to read the temperature and the other to read the humidity. As you can see, getting sensor readings is as simple as using the read temperature and read humidity methods on the DHT object. We also have a condition that returns these dashes in case the sensor fails to get the readings. The readings are returned as strings. By default we're reading the temperature in Celsius degrees. To get the temperature in Fahrenheit degrees, you can comment this line and then comment this other line. Proceeding to the web server page. As you can see, the web page shows one heading and two paragraphs. There is a paragraph to display the temperature and another to display the humidity. There is also these two icons to style our page. Let's see how this web page is created. These lines contain all the HTML text with styles included to build the web page. Everything is stored in the index underscore HTML variable. Now we'll go through the HTML text and see what each part does. For a detailed explanation of the HTML, Go to the project page. This meta tag makes your web page responsive in any browser. This link tag is needed to load the icons. Between the style tags, we add some CSS to style the web page. Inside the body tags, we add our content. This is the heading of our web page. It says ESP32 DHT server, but you can add any other text. Then we have two paragraphs one to display the temperature and the other to display the humidity. These i tags display the icons. For more instructions on how to choose the icons, please refer to the project page. Write the word temperature into the web page. The temperature text between percentage signs is a placeholder for the temperature value, which means that this temperature text is like a variable that will be replaced by the actual temperature value from the DHT sensor. The placeholders on the HTML text should go between the percentage signs. Finally, we add the degree symbol. 
We use the same approach for the humidity paragraph, but it uses a different icon on the percentage humidity placeholder. Finally, there's some JavaScript code in our web page that updates the temperature and humidity automatically every 10 seconds. To update the temperature on the background, we have a set interval function that runs every 10 seconds. Basically, it makes a request in the slash temperature URL to get the latest temperature reading. When it receives that value, it updates the HTML element with the ID temperature. In summary, this section is responsible for updating the temperature asynchronously. The same process is repeated for the humidity readings. Since the DHT sensor is quite slow getting the readings, if you plan to have multiple clients connect to an ESP32 at the same time, we recommend increasing the request interval or remove the automatic updates. Now, we need to create the processor function that will replace the placeholders in our HTML text with the actual temperature and humidity values. When the web page is requested, we check if the HTML has any placeholders. If it finds the temperature placeholder, we return the temperature by calling the readHT temperature function created previously. If the placeholder is humidity, we return the humidity value. Let's move on to the setup. Initialize the serial monitor for debugging purposes. Initialize the DHT sensor. Connect your local network and print the ESP32 IP address. Finally, we'll add these lines to handle the web server. When we make a request on the root URL, we send the HTML text that is stored on the index underscore HTML variable. We also need to pass the processor function that will replace all the placeholders with the right values. We need to add two conditional handlers to update the temperature and humidity readings. When we receive a request on the slash temperature URL, we simply need to send the updated temperature value. It is plain text and it should be sent as a char. The same process is repeated for the humidity. Lastly, we can start the server. Because this is an asynchronous web server, we don't need to write anything in the loop. That's pretty much how the code works. We have a more in-depth step-by-step explanation on our website or below this video. Now, upload the code to your ESP32. Make sure you have the right board and COM port selected. After uploading, open the serial monitor at the baud rate of 115200. Press the ESP32 Reset button. The ESP32 IP address should be printed in the serial monitor. Open a browser and type the ESP32 IP address. Your web server should display the latest sensor readings. Note that the temperature and humidity readings are updated automatically without the need to refresh the web page. I hope you found this project useful. For all the resources, codes, schematics, and step-by-step -step instructions, go to randomnerdtutorials.com. This tutorial is a preview of the Learn ESP32 with Arduino IDE course. If you like this project, make sure you take a look at the course page, where we covered this and a lot more topics with the ESP32. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.